I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is one of the most requested videos I've had over the years. It's not the most requested, but it's pretty commonly requested. And there's not any other videos I can find that really 100% spell it out in the old Joshua Bardwell fashion. So I'm going to make it. And the video is how to set up Buddy Box or Trainer Mode on your Tyrannus or really any OpenTX radio. Stay tuned. I always try and make my videos with as few assumptions about what you already know as possible. And for those of you who already know a thing or two, you may get the impression that I go on unnecessarily. But for those of you who are just getting into it, I like to, I don't like to leave you behind. And so in, I'm going to explain that buddy box means that one person, a student, has control via his radio or her radio, and one person uh, an instructor can take control from the student and save the plane from crashing. That's the gist of it. The student gets to fly and the instructor watches and when anything seems to be going wrong, the instructor can save the day, set things up again and pass control back to the student. Now, this is actually not commonly done with with FPV quads. I don't know why. It's It's totally the way you would learn to fly a fixed wing plane line of sight. I don't know why, maybe it's just because we all learn to fly with a simulator. Maybe it's because we're not as afraid of crashing a quad and so people just get a quad and they crash it a hundred times and then they know how to fly. So we're gonna start with two radios here and the common nomenclature is to refer to the instructor's radio as the master and the student's radio as the slave. In the interest of modern political correctness, I'm not gonna use those terms. We'll call it the student's radio and the instructor's radio. Okay, we'll start with the student's radio. And what you're going to do is this. First thing you're going to do is you're going to make a new model. You, you can do it with an existing model, but it's just nice to start fresh. So I'm going to press menu one time. I'm going to go down to a new position, an empty position. I'm going to long press enter and choose create model. And now that the model's created, I'm going to press page to go to the model setup. And I'm going to press the up key to scroll through the bottom to the bottom of the line, and I need to set the internal RF mode to off. We don't need that. And then I'm gonna set the trainer mode to slave slash jack. Now to hook these guys together, you're gonna need a cable. And for the Tyrannus, QX7, X-Lite, all those radios, a simple mono audio cable, one, one eighth inch jack, 3.5 millimeter, if you, if you swing that way. Either mono or stereo will work. However, I have tried this with a couple of different cables, all of which look the same, and some of them worked and some of them didn't work. So if you're trying to get this to work and it's just not working, that could be the problem. What you're gonna to wanna to do is plug the cable into the trainer port on the back of the radio. Now, on the Tyrannus, this is the trainer port. On the QX7, it's up near the top. On the X-Lite, I don't have one handy. I think it's on the bottom. You may need to look up where exactly the trainer port is. Don't get confused, by the way. Many of these radios also have a headphone jack and it, that that's not what you want. Won't hurt anything, it just won't work. So I'm gonna plug in here to the trainer port. And what you should see when you plug in is this little icon here indicating that the trainer is being detected. If you don't see that, it probably means your cable is not the right cable and you need to try a different one. Now, on the instructor's radio, we're gonna press menu, page, and we're gonna go, and you just wanna confirm that the trainer mode is set to master slash jack. That's the default and it should be set that way, but you know, that's, you just double check it. And on the instructor's radio, you're going to have whatever model loaded is the model that controls the quad that the student is gonna be flying, okay? The next thing you wanna do is you wanna set up a way to hand off control or take control back from the student. And the way you do that is by long press menu and then page to global functions. And you can do this in the model setup, but it's, it's nice to do it as a global function because then it'll work for any model that you have set up on your radio. If you want it to only apply to one model, you would press menu one time, short press menu, and you would go 
to special functions. This is the model specific special functions and you would do the same thing there. I'm going to set it up as a global function so I only have to do it once no matter what model my student is flying. Okay, so long press menu, page to global functions, pick an empty line, press enter to start setting it up, long press enter and we're going to choose switches and then I'm going to pick a switch that I'm going to use to take control back or give control to the student. It's very common to do this with the momentary switch. The instructor will pull the momentary switch to give control to the student and then release the momentary switch to take control back and fly the quad. So I'm going to pull the momentary switch and it will auto populate here. And you'll notice as I release the momentary switch, it changes position up or down. So we want it to be SH down, which will be when the momentary switch is pulled. I'm going to hit exit and leave that alone. I'm then going to go down all the way to the end and press enter one time to check this box and I'm just going to confirm that when I pull the switch SH goes bold and the trainer function was that means it's becoming active. Having done that the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to exit all the way out and then long press menu page to the trainer section and what I want to do is I want to plug in the trainer cable to the back of this radio and what you should see now is these numbers at the bottom of the screen are wiggling and jiggling and as you move the sticks you should see the numbers change. Those are your four main control uh, channels on the student's radio. So I'm going to, sorry I'm, you didn't see that, I'm moving the sticks on the student's radio and the instructor's radio we see these moving. Okay, And you're going to want to change the mode here and the mode controls how the student's inputs are combined with the instructor's inputs. So if I press enter one time on aileron, I can set the mode to plus equals, which means that the student's inputs will be added to the instructor's inputs. It means that the instructor can give a gentle push to the left or to the right, or you can set that to colon equals, and that's what we're going to do. That's a great thing to do until you get more familiar with trainer mode. Let's just set them to colon equals. The next thing I need to do is make sure that the incoming channels are mapped in the correct order and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the inputs screen on the student's radio and I can see the channel order is A, E, T, R. So A, Laurent needs to be channel 1, Elevator, E needs to be channel 2, Throttle needs to be channel 3, and Rudder needs to be channel 4 because that's just that's the order they were in, you see. Okay, and let's back out. And I'm going to press page a couple times to get to the channel, the monitor screen, the channel monitor screen. I'm going to hold the trainer switch with my finger and I'm going to move the student's sticks. And I'm going to confirm that throttle moves. And if you're not sure about, see I've renamed my channels so they can see what they are. But if you're not sure, just release the student, uh, the trainer switch and move your own stick and you can see that channel 3 is moving when I move the throttle now I'm going to hold the trainer switch and I'm going to move the students and see that channel 3 moves when the student moves the throttle I'm going to move my aileron which is channel 1 I'm going to hold the switch and move the students aileron channel 1 pitch my pitch moves channel 2 students pitch moves channel 2 students yaw okay so now the students channels are all mapped correctly I'm going to hold down the menu key and page back to the trainer. And the last thing I need to do is center the student's sticks and press highlight calibrate and press enter to calibrate the center, the student's centers. And then we can check the end points. And if you're doing two OpenTX radios, these should be correct, but move the student sticks to the extremes and see that they go to from minus 100 to plus 100, minus 100 to plus 100 minus 100 to plus 100. Down here at the bottom line, as you move the sticks, they'll go from minus 100. They don't have to be exactly precise. This is, you know, it's, it should be pretty close. If any of them are not exactly right, you're going to change the weight right here. So if one of them for some reason only goes to 75%, come up here and increase the weight to cause the to cause it to go to 100%. If you're worried about the student maybe overcorrecting, you might want to decrease the rate. Give the student only 75% or 50% control of the elevator, yaw, uh, aileron, and rudder channels. Hmm, something to think about. At this point, you should be ready to go. Definitely test this out. 
yourself to make sure that everything is going correctly, the number one thing you can do is you can page to the channel monitor. This screen right here shows what will be output to the quad when you're flying. So when the switch is released, everything should be normal. When you pull the switch, you should see the inputs from the student sticks. And that's about all there is to it. Bear in mind when you're doing this that the student will not be able to arm and disarm the quad. We've only given the student control of the first four control channels, the, the, the sticks. It's up to you to disarm in the event of a crash and it's up to you to arm. It is possible for you to override that and I'll give you a, a clue as to how, but we're not gonna dive too deep. If I go to the mixer screen, here in the mixer screen, I can create a mixer line if I long press enter and then choose my source and long press enter. One of the things I can choose as a mixer source is the trainer inputs. And here you're gonna see TR1 and you can go all the way through from TR1 to TR16. Those are the incoming trainer channels. Now, TR1 through four are the stick inputs and do not need to be set up separately. This is a case where for once OpenTX has made it easy to do something automatic. But if you want to do any of your other modes, like aux modes or anything else you want to, might want to pass control from the student, just set up a mixer on TR5, TR6, whatever channel it's on. You will need to set up the student's mixer to control those modes. And it's very easy to do that just by setting it up with OpenTX Companion. You can copy your mixer lines and aux modes and stuff over from your radio to the student's radio if that's something you want to do. Now you know how to set up buddy box or trainer mode on OpenTX. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how this goes for you. If you're an instructor, does this work for you? Is there some way I, I haven't actually, I, I'm making this video because I'm going to give my son his first quadcopter for uh, for Christmas and I figure he's going to need some help from me. He, I've tried to get him to practice in the sim and he just wants to punch out and do flips and rolls. So he's going to need some help and uh, that's why I've set it up. But I haven't actually tried this yet. So let me know if there's some things I've overlooked or things that you think I ought to have added. Tell me down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.